This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. In this lecture, we're going to look at the finance lease in the books of the lessor. This will be a long-term leasing arrangement normally. An example would be a bank that rents an asset, let's say an aeroplane, to an airline for a long time, perhaps 40 years. So, as an example, bank leases a plane to an airline for 40 years. In strategic business reporting, we're trying to paint a picture in the financial statements of that transaction from the perspective of the bank. The bank cannot decide where the aeroplane should fly they cannot decide when to take off. That's down to the airline and the pilot. From the bank's perspective, this is simply a form of lending arrangement. They've paid a lot of money to Airbus to get the plane. They transfer the plane to the airline, like Malaysian Airlines, and then they say to Malaysian Airlines, now you owe us lots of money. So in the books of the bank, you will not see an aeroplane. Instead, you will see a receivable. So looking in the course notes, again, when we're looking at the soft P of the bank, in the balance sheet, thou show a receivable. Their income is not from passenger fares. Their income is, of course, they'll make money on this debt, finance income or interest. So in the profit and loss account, they will show interest income. It's possible that you might be asked to calculate the value of this opening receivable, which is a little bit messy. As you can see in the notes, the receivable is measured effectively again at something that's known as the net investment in the lease. The net investment in the lease is defined below. The definition doesn't get us very far though, does it? It just says, the gross investment discounted. Now, we'll be given the interest rate, so the discounting is not a problem, but what is the gross investment? Well, that's on the next line. Again, even this looks complicated, but I promise you it's not. Let's translate these words. Minimum lease payments receivable this is the money that the lessee, the customer, promises to pay. So this is actually, again, the money from the customer, from the lessee. At the end of the lease, the lessee will give back the asset and say, thank you, there you are. The bank is now sitting there with a big aeroplane in its car park, clearly they'll have to sell it to someone else. So another airline or scrap or something, and that's known as unguaranteed residual value. So it's not always scrap proceeds, but that's an easy way to think about it. So the bank is saying my investment in the lease is the money coming from the lessee plus any scrap or whatever at the end of the term of the lease discounted to present value. We're going to have a look at an example 
That's example six. If you need to, pause the recording again while you read the example. The first paragraph is telling us what will be received from the lessee. So the annual rentals of 5,000 are coming from the lessee. Notice it says the first one is paid at the start of the period. So that means these payments are paid in advance. At the end of the life, the property will be sold to a third party. So as I say, the 400, I'd think about again as scrap proceeds. I'll just write from third party, e.g. a scrap dealer. What we have to do is to work out what value would be booked in the account of the receivable at the start of the lease. You could be given discount tables. Again, you might not. And even if you are, sometimes it's quicker to work things out on your calculator. So make sure you know where your discounting button is. So your discounting button will look like that, a little hat, or an X to the power of Y key, or an X white spot key. It's probably one of those anyway. So I want to know the value, again, of this asset, again, in the books at the start of the lease. So I'm going to do a discounted cash flow working in the same way as you've always done them when you've been doing financial management. So I'll make a list of the years, a list of the cash flows. We'll do some discounting. I'll put discount factor and that will lead us to the end where we'd have the present values. I'll put numbers down the side for the years 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The customer pays in advance. So at time naught, the customer gives me their opening rental, which was 5,000. And that will repeat itself, won't it? another four times. That's the money from the customer. Remember the customer pays in advance. At the end of the fifth year, the asset is then sold for scrap and the scrap value again was 400. I'll put the discount factors in place. So 1 over 1.04, 1 over 1.04 to the power of 2, 1 over 1.04 to the power of 3, 4, and 5. <clears throat> when you do the maths, if your numbers are a bit different to the examiners, it's fine. It's just rounding. No one minds. The first one's easy though, isn't it? So off we go. End of year one, I've got 4808. End of year two, I've got 4623. Next year, I've got 
four, 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 five. End of year four, four, two, seven, four. And finally, the scrap proceeds. Three, two, nine. Then we'll need to add that up to get the opening lease receivable. I've got two, three, four, seven, nine. So how does all of that look? We've done the number, but we're saying, well, what goes where in the financial statements? This lease started on the 1st of Jan 15. So we're gonna have a look at some extracts from the financial statements. First of all, on the 1st of Jan 15, and secondly, one year later, on the 31st of December, 15. We're going to look first in the soft P. In the soft P, the lessor will book a receivable. And we just worked that out, didn't we? That's the opening figure that we were struggling to get. Two, three, four, seven, nine. Now, when we get to the end of the year, that will be remeasured using amortized cost or so effectively or an amortized mere cost accounting using the discount rate of 4%. And also, of course, in the P&L, we will have our finance income. Now, there won't be on the first day of the contract, but there will be by the end of the year. So we need to work out these two numbers that I've marked with an X. And we'll use an amortized cost style of working. The only thing you have to be careful with is make sure the customer is paying in advance. So I'm going to write across the page. This is 2015. At the start of the year, we had 23479. The first thing that happened is that the customer paid me some money so we had some cash coming in. Lovely, lovely. How much cash came in? It was $5,000. Interest will now accrue on the net amount. So in the PL, I'm now going to have my finance income. That's the figure in the P&L. The interest rate is 4%. And that will accrue on the net figure. You could put a subtotal if you want, but I think you could probably see this from here. You could just draw. So I think you could probably see from here what's happening. So 23479 less 5,000 times 4% is 739. And then the carried down at the end is 19218. 
if my numbers are right, I think they are, that would be the figure that goes in the soft P. So 739 will be in the profit and loss. 739 will be in the profit and loss. That's the finance income. Don't forget, you can pause these recordings if you need to make notes. 739 in the profit and loss. 19218 in the soft B. Sometimes people say, well, should you split the receivable between less than a year, more than a year? Well, the prize winner will. And 5,000 is receivable within one year. I don't think you have time. I don't think it's something that would attract a lot of marks. The end. <laughs>